Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This, as you know, is Carter Reed Exner. This is his girlfriend, McKenna Davis. She has not put any fishing videos out with me yet, I don't think. This is the first one. She has caught some uh, walleye with Carter that I've put on screen pictures, and I'll probably put another picture right here, some big fat walleye. But we are on a mission today to hopefully get her, her PB pike. What is your PB pike? 42. 42, okay, maybe we won't get her a PB <laughs> pike. Maybe we'll get close to that. But we have six rods set up right now. We've got four for McKenna, she's using two of mine, and then two for Carter. A couple on the iFish Pro, a couple on the Finicky Foolers. We are at beautiful Lake of the Prairies, Southern Manitoba, staying at Lost Meadow Resort, one of my favorite places to stay here. Lowen always has nice cabins there, and I'm during the week right now, so he has availability. So I called him up last minute and he's like, yeah, no problem. So we're gonna fish the day. We're gonna head back to the cabins and then maybe go on some perch or walleye adventure tomorrow. We're not really sure yet, but today's mission is big pike. Southern Manitoba has a lot of good big pike opportunities. You just gotta do some research, but there, there, are, available, there are lakes out down the south that are really good. And Lake of the Prairies being one of them. And honestly, there's nowhere on this lake that you can go that you won't have a good chance at a big fish. You literally can set up at any access point and have an opportunity at Big Pike. So let's see what happens. We got a flag, didn't take long. Inside flag, it's peeling. It's peeling. Three amigos here. Three amigos. Is it going fast? I like it, I like it. This isn't fair, McKenna. We got four rods for you. <laughs> and two for Carter. And he hooks up first. Oh yeah. Mud dive, mud dive. Doesn't feel big. Doesn't feel big. Yeah. Never know though, it took out quite a bit of line. Never know. Treat it like it's big until you know. I love this rod. How come you stole McKenna's first fish? This, this was not the hole I picked to go off first. We've got six rods out right now. I've dedicated my two rods to McKenna, and then Carter's got his two. We've got our uh, knot here for the slip knot. I don't think it's small. Like, it's not tiny, Carter. The mud dove it, it went down. I bet you it's gonna come up with a face full of mud. We're on like a big, solid mud flat here, so. Lots of times these fish will like mud dive in there and they'll dig their nose down in there and uh, they'll come up with a face full of mud. Uh, that's a big fish, I think, Carter. I'm pretty sure that's a big fish. I just saw lots of white for a second. Uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a big fish. Oh boy, this is a tank. Look at the mouth. Oh, I gotta put my hand on the hooks on that side. Oh my goodness, Ooh. it's big, Carter. I'm gonna pull it up here, show it. Oh my goodness, it's fat too. Well, that's a good way to start it off. <laughs> Unreal. We'll get the hook out and we'll go into the live. Also, Carter can hold it and do a picture with it or something there. Okay, fish is in the live all right now. Carter's gonna pick it up. He's gonna toss it on the bump board quick first. What do we got? That is a nice fish. 41. 41, awesome. Or 40 and three quarters. 40 and three quarters, close enough. Too honest, pick it up, show it off to this camera. You bet, awesome. I'm gonna say that's an assist to McKenna. Beautiful, beautiful fish to start and send her home. Very cool, very cool. Oh, 40 and three quarters and a fat one with a big noggin on it too. Get her tail just right below the water line there. Yeah, so she has some strength to propel herself, awesome. Okay. We almost should be changing all those reels for McKenna now. I don't care. No. <laughs> no, McKenna says no. <laughs> we'll, we'll stay like this for now. Awesome. Well, she's been a little slow since our last pike there. It's about an hour and a half-ish probably. We've had one false flag, but we are ready to cook up some fish. Carter and I kept a fish from the last video that you probably saw. And in that video, I talked about the male and the female pike, how to tell them apart. So we killed a male pike near the end of the day cleaned it up and I have it out here and we're going to make some fish sandwiches today but we're going to do it with catch and cook beer batter and you don't have to use beer for beer batter 
Beer batter itself means just like a wet batter. And you can use water, you can use ginger ale. I've done orange crush, but today our weapon of choice is grape crush. That's right, grape crush. So we're going to get some oil in my pan here. That's right, we brought a turkey fryer right on the ice. Do it all like that. Get the oil going, get it hot, and do up our mixture here of uh, our batter. Wet batter, I'll talk about the consistency and how you want to kind of get that. Play. Play. And it's Play. yours. It's Carter's too? No Grab way. The Grab the tools, McKenna. Where are they? Oh, okay, right there. We're just trying to... Carter said as soon as we start cooking lunch, <laughs> we're going to have a flag. And yeah, did you watch it go up? I was, no. Because somebody, I heard McKenna I say it. flag. And once again, it's Carter's rod. We've got four rods for McKenna. And Carter's got two. Oh yeah, that's running. That's good. The disappointment on McKenna. <laughs> and it's yours. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's always hard to tell for sure. Oh, gone? Or just at you? Just came at you? Just came at you. Wow. This is big. Is it? I think so. Carter's calling big. I'm calling small. But we'll find out. It came right at him fast. Like like a rocket. Obviously it's got some weight. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? It's pretty head shaky though. Yeah, it is pretty head shaky. It's pretty head shaky. That's small. Oh. It's a it's a carter fish. <laughs> this one, <laughs> this one literally would be like a perfect luncher, but we already have a fish. Look at this. We could have caught lunch today. Let's see here. We got barbless, so this will come out no problem. Snip, snip, done. Quick little show off female. there. Female. Is it a female? I think so. See, now Carter's watching. Yeah, that's a pear shaped. Ah, uh, no, that could be a male. It's pretty straight. Or I meant key. Yeah, yeah um, key. it's a key yeah. shaped <laughs> butthole there. Now Carter's sexing all the pike. So believe this is a, a male. I'll show, uh, I'll show Carter a female when we catch one. We probably could have showed him with that first fish, but back down, nice and healthy. That was on a herring, right? Yep. Yep. This was the herring. See ya. So the biggest trick with any wet batter is a good consistency. I'm gonna use about three quarters of this bag probably right now, I'd say. And then we'll see, we'll start with three quarters of the grape crush here. And then we'll go from there. But you want a consistency that kind of just falls off your spoon. If I end up like uh, running out of this, I'll just use water to kind of finish off the, the little mixture here. Mix her up. So right now I can tell already that this is definitely going to be too thick. See how it's like just like like cookie dough? No good. You want like a consistency that just drips off of your spoon nicely but still leaves it kind of coated. So I can already tell that I'm going to have to go to uh, the rest of the scrape crush as well as some water. Well, maybe not for sure. So I ended up not having to use water. I got a nice consistency. See how it's still, it's sticking on the spoon everywhere around it, but it's just like kind of dripping off to the fact where it's like, it's not running off, but it's not like clumping off. It's just a nice even drip. That's a really good consistency right there. Nailed it. I used about almost the whole can of Grape Crush and probably I'd say almost actually the whole bag of this. So you probably go pretty close to a full bag with one can, it's my guess, it'd be really close. Beer batter itself will go a long ways in terms of like feeding a lot of people. We've got one pike here and a beer batter, and I guarantee you even with three of us, there will be leftover fish. Mix those pieces up. And then wait for our oil to get the right temperature, which is hot. I don't have a thermometer with me, I just wing it. Cooking with Clayton. Okay, let's check our oil temp. Oh yeah, perfect. Perfect. You don't want too hot, but you do want it to be bubbling like that. Let some of the batter drip off. You don't want to put too many pieces in when it comes to beer batter because it will stick together. If you get those pieces clumped too close, they'll stick together. Beer batter, you can give the fish a little flip in the batter there. 
the bottom will usually cook a little bit faster than the top. Just like that, second batch. Oh, does that look good? I don't know what you guys are eating. It's enough here for me, but you guys are gonna just have chips or something, I think, here. Bun, cheese, mayo, sweet chili. Pre-cut bun. Pre-cut, I cut them. They're not, uh, they don't have any lettuce or anything like that. This isn't a, if you wanna get down in Florida and you have a fish sandwich, you have fried fish with like a tartar sauce and lettuce and all that stuff, so. You're gonna need more fish in there though, for sure. Does it pass the test, Carter? Yeah, good, kinda. So this right here, catch and cook beer batter. There's a link below in the description of this video that obviously supports Jay and Josh, because this is their company, and it'll help support the channel if you buy from that link too. So go get some catch and cook. The inside one again, eh? I don't know if, it, oh yeah, it's moving, that's good. So when you get there, McKenna, you just pull, grab the rod out and pull a bunch of line out of the reel. Hopefully it didn't drop it. I did see it running on our way over here. And it looks like it kind of went that way, which is good. It's usually a sign of a bigger one when they don't go too far. Okay, just reel till it's you got some pressure, just go slow. If you feel, yeah, if you feel tight, yeah, set it. Set it, got him. Yeah, lots of pressure. Good pressure, yeah. Just, yeah, keep going. Oh, yeah, good, good, good. If it wants to run, let it run. Doesn't seem that big, does it? No. Hey, it's a tiny one. It's a tiny one. Oh, we saved our bait, though. It's all good. They can't all be big, right? See how he just sat there forever with it, too. So, sat there with Everfort and the hook's still right there. Well, the good news is, McKenna, that you still get the next fish. Nothing to it. Okay. Well, McKenna finally caught a fish, and it's uh, it's one we wouldn't even keep for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> That's why we brought you, McKenna, for the little guys. Awesome. Well, they can't all be monsters. We still have time left, though, a couple hours yet, so hopefully we can uh, manage to get McKenna a big one yet, since Carter hogged the big one, you know, earlier in the day. I'm kidding about that, obviously. Kidding, not kidding. So, so far today, our weapon of choice for bait has been two different styles. I think we've got two fish on the herring, or no, two fish on the Cisco, one on the herring, another flag on the on a herring. But right there, it's about a, a seven inch herring. You can get those like in vacuum sealed bags like this. They're, this just says large, but it all depends like on the company. This could be a medium for some companies, could be a large for some others. Etc. And then this has been a really good bait for me. These like five to six inch Cisco's, just like that, a little snack size. You don't have to go overkill for big pike, even like this time of year. Yeah, I know they always say that late March the the big girls fire up on the big baits or whatever. But I find a lot of times that they're still a little bit sluggish. That they're coming up their spawn. I do better for bigger baits like early in the year, like December type of thing. And then once their metabolism starts to slow down, a little bit smaller bait. And of course you can put a big bait down there and it's gonna score at some point, but don't think that you're not gonna catch a big pike on a smaller bait too. Oh, flag, 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 flag. Oh, flag, flag. Tools, Carter. So yeah. much for my hand warmers. This is it. This is the one. This is the one. Where are you going? We're we're gonna go we're gonna go where the flags up, McKenna. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> that flag's not up. Yeah, Ma I'm McKenna, you can go it. there, but we're gonna go to the rod of the flag. Just wait, nothing's really moving yet. So, okay, you can close the bail, and then reel. Yeah, and hit it, hit it. Oh boy, oh boy, nice, nice. I love it, I love it. <laughs> you just have to sit down, hey? That's all there was to it. That's all there was to it. It's coming at you, yeah, coming at you. How's it feel? Oh, it's got pretty big head shakes. Pretty big head shakes. So when you go down, go slow. Slower, when you when you drop your rod tip, go slower. We're almost reel down your tension. There you go, like that, there we go. Yeah. I'm always watching, Carter does the same thing, he always watches for other flags. It's not small, McKenna. This will be bigger than your last one for sure. 
<laughs> I'll promise you that oh, much. God. I'll promise you that much. You want to grab a car or you want me to grab it? Okay. It's, it's big. Yeah. Okay. You're going to grab it and then you come short right off to the camera and you get it. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hand me the tools. I'll do the tool stuff then here. Yeah. It's big. You saw it. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's a gooder. That's a gooder. That's a gooder. <laughs> okay. Well, you did good compared to your last one now. You want to show it off first? You want to unhook it first? Unhook it first? Hook is? Okay, here. Let's unhook it first. And then we'll get it. Then we'll show it off. I'll pull the bait out. It's hooked right here. Hardly. Hardly in the top of the mouth. Nothing to it. Ah, we'll give him a meal there. We'll give him a meal. Show it off for McKenna. It's probably about a 37, 38 inch or something like that. Oh yeah, easily. Easily. How big is it, Carter? Is it 40? It's blind in this eye, hey? Yeah. It's blind in the right eye. I don't know. I think it's like 39-ish, 40 maybe. We want to measure it or no? No. You're, you're good? Yeah. It's up to you. No. It's a nice fish. There's no doubt. But it's not 42. No. It's probably pretty close to like, it's bigger than I thought. <laughs> it's nose got dug down. Nice. You don't nice. want to measure it? No, it's okay. You're okay? Yeah. It's your call, totally. So, okay. You sure? Let him go. She's good. Now it's too late now. We're in the hole. Nice. Oh. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> come back up for a second. Hard cooking. That was it. Hey, perfect. You did it. You made, you made your CSO debut. She's like, <laughs> I cannot be on the video with that tiny, tiny fish. I'm like, Hey, that's the way it is. That's all we get. That's all we get. But that was, I, I don't know, Carter, how big was it? Uh, 38, 39, 38, 39. 39 and a half. 39 and a half. It was nice. Like, we're not, we're not, we don't, us three and a lot of people I fish with, we don't care about every weighing or measuring every fish just because it's more about the excitement. She's going to have a nice fish hold there. I guess Carter held it. We kept your hands warm this way. So, no. yeah. Okay, let's get another bait and uh, keep going. Still got time. So, Carter's going to get the bait and the flasher right now. And all we really got going on here is just a giant, giant mud flat. We got our shallowest flag in about three feet and our deepest flag in about five feet. That's underneath the ice. So it's like, you know, there's probably about two and a half, three feet of ice. So, you know, you got like five, six feet. And then out here, you got about seven, eight feet of ice, something like that. So you don't have to fish super deep. I like fishing shallower, especially when you get into the mud flats. There's so much life in these flats in terms of insects, crayfish, which brings in smaller bait fish, white fish, suckers, all of that. And then obviously the big pike come around too to eat, as well as they'll, if you put yourself in front of like some kind of creek area, it can be a staging for their spawn for later. So sometimes they even just like hang out in front of their spawn area before they're actually ready to go up the creek to spawn or maybe that shoreline or whatever. All fish don't spawn up creeks. They'll use shoreline as well to spawn, especially a lot of our southern lakes don't have all those creek access or running water. Lake of the Prairies itself, the water's dropped a lot. And I don't think the fish will even get up to creeks this year. So they're going to use their shoreline to do a lot of their spawning. But anyways, we'll, ja we'll drop, uh, get another bait going down and uh, see if we can catch another one. But so far, this is a huge success. We're still going to give McKenna the, the rod just so she can try to break her 42 incher, but that was a pretty good fish. We we'll just got to the cabins here at Lost Meadow Resort. It's such a great central location. It's good fishing north, there's good fishing south. Pike, walleye, perch. We're gonna get the trailer here unloaded, get everything situated, get checked in, and then, I don't know, cook up some food, chill, get regrouped and regeared for tomorrow, and. Uh, get out there for another day. Might just do some straight exploring tomorrow. Might not even film anything for sure. There's always some areas that I wanna check out and sometimes it's easier to do it without the cameras. But anyway, nonetheless, we had a good day today. We got two nice pike, two smaller ones, had some yummy fish sandwiches and low and books up pretty quick here. So if you are looking for something in May for open water season, cause I believe May 14th, I believe, I think is the day that open water season starts here. And uh, usually that walleye fishing that first month, a month and a half is like insane here. So call and book now because he fills up quick. I see there's some guys here already with some sleds. 
there. They got that cabin all booked up. So yeah, get unloaded and get to it, but that'll wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, get outside.